This video will cover the topic, Table for a Square Root Function. The table for a square root function has two columns. In order to create this table, we solve the function for specific values of x, which are stored in the left column of the table. The values that we solve for are stored in the right column of the table. This strategy can also be used to create a table for any type of function. However, Square roots have one very important rule. Taking the square root of a negative number does not result in a real number. This is very important to remember. So with that being said, let's try an example. Fill in the table using the function below. f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 6. I see that the left column, which has values of x, is made up for us already. Do we fill the right column with solutions of the function using x values given to us? This is exactly what we do. Let's start from the top and solve for f of negative 1. f of negative 1 is equal to the square root of negative 1 minus 6. However, this isn't a real number since we cannot take the square root of a negative number. Therefore, in the table, we will write down that f of negative 1 is not a real number. Now let's solve for f of 0. f of 0 is equal to the square root of 0 minus 6, which is equal to 0 minus 6, since the square root of 0 is 0. 0 minus 6 is equal to negative 6. So in the table under the right column, for f of 0, we would write down negative 6. Now let's solve f of 4. f of 4 is equal to square root of 4 minus 6, which is equal to 2 minus 6, since the square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 6 is equal to negative 4. So our third value f of 4 in the right hand column of the table is going to be negative 4. Now let's solve f of 64. f of 64 is equal to the square root of 64 minus 6. The square root of 64 is 8, so this can be simplified to 8 minus 6. 8 minus 6 is equal to 2. Correct. So our last value, f of 64 in the right hand column of the table, is 2. So now our table is complete, right? Yes, it is. It looks like that in order to create a table for a square root function, we first create two columns and fill the left one with some values of x, if they are not provided for us already. Then we solve the function for those values of x and place those results in the right column. Also, for square root functions, it is also important to remember that taking the square root of a negative number does not result in a real number. That is exactly right. Remember that this can be done for any type of function, as well as it may be useful when trying to graph a function on the coordinate plane.